long ago, the playoffs, it's a different sport. It's a whole different kind of everything in general. And, you know, Jimmy's focus, I think his, uh, his leadership, um, attention to detail with uh, the pieces, the integral pieces that we're trying to get done defensively stuff um, are heightened. And uh, we need it all. We need it all. And it's appreciated and respected. Brett, Kyle Newback, Philly Voice. Where do you start with that Joel B performance? Like, where does your mind go first with everything that you did out there tonight? I mean, for me, it goes straight to the blocks. Um, you know, we can talk about a windmill dunk. You know, you can talk about some finesse post moves and that. But I go to defense. Like, that. that's what interests me the most to date with this series. When we talk about whatever we're going to talk about, my mind goes straight there. Uh, he is he is our crown jewel defensively and I suppose offensively too, but certainly defensively. And his uh, his uh, rim protection and um, blocking shot ability tonight stood out as much to me as as anything in in, in an incredible performance. Brett, to uh, follow up on Kyle's question, when Joel is right physically, do you feel like you have the best player in this series? Yes. Brett, uh, over here, Brett. Uh, Rich Hoffman, The Athletic. Um, you guys have not been a high pick and roll team during your tenure here. Um, seems like you've been running a lot of them specifically this series. Is that just this matchup, or is there a comfortability with Jimmy and Tobias? And my answer isn't when I give it, it's true, but it's not meant to be disrespectful. We haven't had many point guards here that people go over on. And usually when you run a pick and roll, there's a man to screen, there's somebody there. And we have had guards that have been very good, from Michael Carter Williams to Ben to TJ, pick them ish. Like you just keep going on and on and on. And so like that's not their strength. Their strength is, is running an organization, a team, and getting to the rim. They're really good players. But to, to run a pick and roll, you, then you need, to, you need to have somebody to screen. So when you say, well, why are you running more? It's because they, they are stuck out on Jimmy and Tobias. And it's true. Then the world makes sense. Otherwise, it really doesn't. You know, you're screening missed. And I feel like that sort of uh, um, simple answer that I give opens up a lot of other things behind it. You know, the spacing, the rolling. I thought Joel was, was great on rolling tonight um, as an example. But the, the volume, the frequency is, is, is a really simple answer I, I give. Hey, hey Coach, uh, Jason Blevins, Philly Front Office. To, the, to your point, it seemed like you really had Joel trying to get him rolling to maybe make uh, Gasol move laterally, defend in space. It seemed like that was an early concentration to open up some of the other parts of Joel's offense. Is that fair? Was that planned? It is fair, and it was planned. And to think like you're just going to force Joe at a block isn't smart. Marcus O is a defensive player of the year. And Serge Ibaka is a strong athlete. And so to move Joel around, you can roll him into the post. You can cross screen him into the post with JJ. You can just like plunk him into the post just on a simple turnout, you know, and get him the ball in the post. It's like you can get him the ball a bunch of different ways, but to have a steady diet of just forcing Joe at a post in a very static, predictable way isn't fair to him and I don't think it helps us and so to your question you know the plan was to try to find different ways to uh to get him going. Brent D. Lyman, the fanatic. Hey, going back to when the, you had everybody but it was still early and I remember like you were being asked like to play to players strengths and that would change some of the things you guys had traditionally been doing. And you said you would do that, but not at the expense of what was best for the group. 
at what point did you find the fine line? Like you give Jimmy the ball more. Yeah. You post Ben more, take the ball out of his hand. What point did you find that place that was good for all of them and best for the group? No, it's a good question. And, and I can't give you like third game Brooklyn or you know last week regular season I can't be that specific but you are correct it, it's evolving that is for sure and it is a lot easier to say and sell when you win and we we have taken great pride in our defense is the thing as I said a five minutes ago that interests me the most that I think connects the dots like I feel because because normally you know teams that I have coached that you want we wished it better let the, let their offense sort of dictate their move and then if we felt pretty good you got a chance of like playing some good defense and there's an inverted um, attitude that I love like they, they we're trying to guard we're really trying to play defense and how about our crowd it was spectacular and so when we come down to the offensive end the evolution of Jimmy with the ball, or posting Joe, or you know, utilizing Ben, bringing JJ off screens, making sure Tobias, you know, who can score a bunch of different ways, is used. I think it's it, it's evolving, but I, I can't pinpoint a time. I can tell you, winning sure allows us to keep it moving forward in the direction that you you just mentioned. Two more guys. Coach Pat Carl on Sixers Wire. Uh, coming into the series, the bench was you know thought to be an advantage for Toronto. But your bench has been terrific for these first couple of games. What can you say about it? That I agree with you, and we need we need it. I mean, to have the boost that you learned before the game, to have Mike Scott come back, and and Greg and James really has been uh, uniquely special in the quiet, especially in the absence of of uh, you know Mike, where I can get a you know shove Tobias maybe more to a four, and there, there are wing minutes to be had. And so I think our bench has been good. I think they, you know, continue to, to come in and pass the ball. I like our 29 assists, 13 turnovers for us is actually not too bad. But I think, you know, that bench has come in and given us a spark and continued on with sort of the defensive um, efforts that we're trying to put out. Brett, uh, Michael Lawanga, so, AP Broadcast, Radio PA Network. You talk about the fact that Michael Mario Alarm, but Toronto makes a run at you in the third, and it was an eight, and you open up with a 11 nothing, then 22 uh, 1 2 run. First of all, you guys closed out the game and, and just kind of put it away when you had to. I mean, when Kawhi is doing what he does, and, and his, his individual uh, offensive brilliance is. is daunting, haunting, pick whatever words you want to say. When you're sitting there and you're like, you got a 6'10 athlete like Ben on him, and he's busting his tail to try to do a good job, and he just makes tough shots. Then we, we you know, had to change. We had to come out and blitz him. We really had to go at him. Now, the punishment at times possibly could be they start being the best, which they are, three-point shooting team in the NBA, and, you know, he, Kawhi ends up quarterback, and the punishment of our scrambles, but I thought that that blitzing him helped, um, and and we took off. You know, it was sort of a launching pad for us getting out and going uh, in open court. But when it got to that margin, and Kawhi sort of the architect, you know, you, you had to do something, and we chose to go after him and get the ball out of his hands. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. Really interesting stuff from Brett Brown talking about the approach to uh, Kawhi Leonard there. I want to get to a couple other points he made. One about Joel Embiid, and the question was asked about him rolling to the rim specifically, and, and Coach Brown went into more detail on their approach just not to make him predictable, not put him in the same spots where Marcus Gasol could body him up, where they could double-team easily, and it's, it's a simple adjustment, but it can wreak havoc for a defense if you have a guy that talented and you don't know where he's going to be possession to possession. Well, Matt, it did wreak havoc. And uh, first of all, for someone who's questionable, yes, and it was unsure of what they could <laughs> play. Yeah. I tell you, he uh, uh, played great. But getting him in movement, you know, getting him in movement, obviously Gasol, uh, if, you, if you try to post up and, and sort of play one-on-one, uh, -on -one, it, it, it's really a capable defender. But I think that the, the, the game plan that, that Brett Brown talked about, getting him in movement, getting Gasol in movement so it's not as predictable, 
uh, quick hitters, if you will, uh, worked. And, you know, look, bottom line, too, is he, he, mentally he was in a different place. Yeah. I mean, he felt like he had something to prove. He was aggressive. He was attacking. Uh, defensively, you know, we talked about, you know, he, he said before the game, being productive somehow, some way, maybe, you know, defending or assisting, but having an impact on the game. His confidence was, was, was there. That's Joel Embiid we've seen most of the season. Uh, but I like that. Getting him in movement, being a little bit less or more, uh, being less predictable in terms of how you attack on the offensive end. And uh, certainly Brett Brown helped Embiid with that tonight. Yeah. I thought I'd give the two of you a chance to jump in. No, no, I, I agree. And, and, and not only that, you know, when you talk about putting him in movement, uh, it, it took Gasol out of his normal post-defensive position because Embiid wasn't easy to find on the post. Mm. So therefore, Gasol couldn't establish, get his body on him, move him off, get him into position and force Embiid to make you know, tough moves around the basket. So putting him in movement, cross screens, down screens, pick and rolls, you know, finding him when he can catch the basketball, put it on the floor, and then make a play, it played against Gasol's foot speed. Mm. And I thought that's what, what helped get Embiid off a lot also. Yeah, I mean, Gasol's much more effective when Embiid yeah. is stationary, either in the post or even even out on the wing where he's going to face him up. And, you know, Gasol plays that reasonably well, but if you're going to move him around all the place, he's got less of a shot. And then I think, you know, you know, Coach having the, the presence of mind to say, hey, Kawhi Leonard's hot. I'm going to help my team, right? So we're going to change up the matchup with Simmons. We're going to double team this guy now. Yeah. And, and when we start double teaming him, we're going to take the ball out of his hands and we're going to throw off his rhythm. Now you now he's built confidence in, in the team that he's coaching where that player is saying, okay, you're just not going to let me get embarrassed. You're not going to let me, you know, take this whooping right. that everybody can see. Now you're going to help me right now, and you're going to double team, and I can get the ball out of his hands. That's when the players start to believe in the coach. Well, in the last couple of games, Toronto uh, has shown no ability to punish them for that team. because it's been mostly to why. Here's, here's Nick Nurse. They were seen very passive and not themselves in that entire game. Yeah, I mean, I think we um, we got outplayed, Doug, and, and just about every area we could get outplayed. Just, just in overall, you know, uh, physicality, energy, cutting, uh, rebounding, passing, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think we, we got thoroughly outplayed. And it's been a while, right? It's been a while since I've seen this team play that way. Scott Stinson, Post Media. Nick, um, what did you see from MB tonight that was different? I mean, you had Gasol on him. Gasol had done such a good job previous two games. Did you see anything specific? That well, he uh, would end up with 33. I mean, he got obviously a three ball going a little bit, and he got to the line 12 times. So it's you know 21 of his 33 out there. The, bi the biggest thing was he was carving out space at, right in front of the rim. I thought early in the game, and. Um, you know, we were we were being as physical as we could, and he's ended up shooting a bunch of you know some free throws off that. So, you know, we're just gonna have to do a figure out a better way to to get him removed from right underneath the basket somehow. That was the biggest thing, and then the three ball. But he, he was good. He played with great energy and and great decision making. He, he was rolling really hard to the basket. Um, you know, when he looked us in the eye for his face ups, he made most of those as well. And then he, then when they kicked it out to him for a three, he made those too. Hey, Nick, Mike Grange from Hi, Sportsman over here. I mean, I guess you can't play everybody for every minute, and you went really long with your starters in the third quarter, and then they got away from you. Just that, that three-minute surge to start the fourth. I mean, uh, is there anything you can do? or? Well, I think, I think we got guys back. not making shots. Well, I think, no, I think, I mean, there's a lot more things we can do better, Mike, than, than I mean, listen, we, we, we can't let the shot making affect so many other parts of the game. There, there's pick a thing tonight, right? You can't. Uh, we didn't make shots. You're right, but pick picks anything else, right? But um, I, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we had three starters on the floor to start the fourth. Um, 
but it was just a, a bad run. I think I think again uh, in the second it was similar with three starters to start the second and and um, that part of the game in the second was some shot. Man, I came down and got three or four wide open ones in a row and had got nothing to show for them, not even a, a two or anything. But but uh, and then they they raced them back on us and scored them and that was kind of busted that open early. But those those first couple minutes of the second and fourth were were. Phew, Big, huge momentum swings in the game. Tani Samagi, Eagle News, Philippines. What kinds of adjustments will you make for Game Four in, um, to complement for offensively to complement Kawhi Leonard's um, scoring? Yeah, I think the first adjustment um, we're going to have to make is we're going to have to play a hell of a lot harder, right? And we're going to have to play a hell of a lot more physical. And if we don't do that, then the prettiest things that we decide to do offensively aren't going to matter much. Nick Ed Barkowitz, Philly.com. What was your sense of the uh, physicality out there, chippiness sometimes over the line? What, what did you see out there? Um, I mean, it was physical, but I don't think it was. I don't think it was anything too bad, really. You know, I think there was. Uh, you know, I mean, there was there was two plays that were very similar. I think uh, Ben Simmons lost the ball and took a whack at Kyle, and Pascal lost the ball and took a whack at whoever he took a whack sure. at. Who? Joel. Joel. I think he might have tried to trip him or something. And and um, but other than those two, I think it was some there was some good hard play in the low post, and there was you know some good physical rebounding going on, et cetera, That was pretty normal. Good. Yep. Good. Yep. Yeah, uh, Nick Doug Smith again. Were you sort of surprised that Kyle seemed to pass up a lot of shots? Only took had ten field goal attempts. Did you, you need him to get more shots than that to be successful? Well, I think um, I need to look at it again, Doug. You know, a little more closely. But it felt like there was a lot of guys passing up shots, right? I think I, uh, we were. There's a couple of possessions. I, I I was like, oh, there it goes up, and it would, four more passes would go by. It seemed like every guy that had it was open, and he kept moving it to the next guy. So um, I don't know. That's unselfish on one point, but it, it ended up getting to be where it looked like there was just the shot. First shot was there. You just go ahead and step into it and lace it up. And that's 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 every you know that's everybody. There's not there's not a guy we put out there if it gets swung around to him, we don't want him to to take it. All right, thank you. Toronto head coach Nick Nurse looking for answers after a game three loss. Joel Embiid is on the docket to come to the microphone after a big and entertaining night in Philly.